name is Soham, Maharishi Soham. And I'm speaking to you from India. Tonight, we'll be talking to you about divine grace. Divine grace, as it is known in the West, is a gift from God. In the ancient traditions of the Vedas, we call it Shaktipa, the descent of grace from God to soul, from the higher ones, the illumined ones, the gurus and sad gurus, to the devotees, the disciples. Most people ask, what is the point of Shaktipa? Why Shaktipa? In the human body, there are seven chakras. That is a well-known concept all over the world today. We have yoga centers around the world, in the West, United States, in Europe, in Africa. And as I've explained previously during some of my presentations, yoga is different from religion. Yoga focuses on the self. Religion focuses on the God that is out there. Self-realization, therefore, is the goal. How does a person get to know who he is, what his mission is in life, and where does he go when he leaves this world? He needs to begin, fundamentally, by discovering his true nature, his true self. And what is his true self? His Atman, his soul, is the self. And to know that, he needs to understand the forces operating within his own body. In the human body, as I mentioned, there are seven chakras, seven energy centers. From the base, which is known as Muladhara, going up all the way to the top of the head, which is the crown, we call it Sahasra. The energy flows between those centers like a wheel and rotates. And the, the purpose of it is to clear past life dusts which we call karma. These are particles uh, that are in space, which is collected within the human body. And they need to be cleared for the individual to begin to see the divine light and hear the divine voice, and therefore find his way back to God. Now, what are the forces operating within the human body? It is known by the ancients and the Sadhgurus that the, two, the first two chakras in the body are linked to fire. Most people understand the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. The, therefore, the first two chakras in the human body, from the base to the sexual organ, are connected to fire. The second two, which is the solar plexus, all the way to the heart center, on a heart, that is connected to the sun. Now, most people won't know by reading other religious scriptures how the two eyes are able to see. Our eyes are able to see because they're connected to the sun. The, the next two chakras are connected to the moon. So you move to the throat chakra, and then the next chakra, which is the third eye, between the eyebrows. In most spiritual disciplines, it is required by the aspirant to close his eyes, put his attention between the eyebrows, maybe focus on his master or his teacher, his guru, and chant some form of mantra. And that is known as the third eye, the Tisratil or Ajna. Those forces are the forces linked to the Trinity. Trinity is in every religion. Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, or this is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost within Christianity. Those are the forces that make a person realize his own divinity. So those two energy centers within the body are the connecting point that brings power to the person. And that power allow him to go through life and navigate the currents to God. Now the purpose of Shaktipa, therefore, is to clear the inner bodies of what we call sanskaras. Those sanskaras are like dusts you know, actions committed within past lives, what we've done before, what the individual has said, done, and felt within previous lives and this life. 
in some traditions or in simple English, it's called facsimiles. These are, I call it dust on the body of a pilgrim. When you're walking in the desert and there's dust, it covers your entire body. And you need to have a shower, you need to have a wash, wash your body, come clean. And that dust is basically the sanskaras. And those sanskaras, once they are cleared, the individual can begin to sleep. Now, how are they done? We have so many practices around the world. Uh, most people will do some form of prayer, or some meditation, uh, or contemplation. Even the desert fathers within Christianity will do some contemplation, and the Muslims will do the dhikr, which is basically a repetition of divine name, which is commonly known in India as mantra. So the chanting of mantra, the practice of other form of practices such as tantra and yantra, all of these elements are meant to get the person to clear those particles and to realize himself. But it has been discovered that a lot of people spend lifetime after lifetime trying to realize themselves with no success at all. And that the easiest way to do it is to find an element teacher, a bona fide guru, someone who has realized God himself. It is not possible for a teacher or a master to take you to God if he hasn't done the realization himself. So a sad guru is someone who has not only experienced himself as soul, realized the Atman, but understood the forces of nature, the forces within his own body, but realized what God is. And actually he's become God-like, he's become God himself. Now, such a being, and they are very rare indeed, is able to help you remove your sanskaras. I'm visiting here with my teacher, uh, a master, Dr. Raghufi Singh Goa, who and he's today the, the, the most renowned, the world-renowned transmission, Shaktipa transmission master. I wrote that on my website, sohamyoga.org, that he is the world-renowned transmission Shaktipa master. Uh, it's very difficult for people to understand how a human, or another human being, can awaken the Shakti, the divine power, within other human beings. I've seen some. Sometimes, uh, if you look at, in, within Christianity, St. Teresa of Avila, she was in a cave. And within a cave, after praying for a long, long time, suddenly, the power was awakened within herself, without her knowing how it happened. St. Francis of Assisi, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Catherine of Siena, all of those saints had those experiences, but it came spontaneously. Today, Dr. Gaur has over 100,000 devotees, one lakh, as we would say, in India. And those people who attend his seminars, and you will see them on YouTube, where the Kundalini and the Divine Force is awakening within individuals with them, without them having to do anything. In fact, the Master doesn't even do anything. His simple presence awakens the Kundalini within his own devotees. Now, what happens? You've seen, probably seen some of his videos on um, uh, YouTube, and uh, you see people either laughing or probably crying, some people singing songs, other people dancing. It is called mudra. These are just posture. What happens is uh, that imprints from past life begins to clear rapidly. It's like your karma is accelerating. Things get speeded up. It's like traveling on, on a fast road, on a highway. And those, those powerful energies wash over the disciples, awakens power within himself. And that is called Kriya. Kriya means that you are not responsible for what is happening. In other traditions or with other yoga, and the Saint Pantajari, who was founded a lot on the yoga tradition, has developed the eight forms of yoga, you know, which is divided into three. But we have Hatha Yoga and Raja Yoga, uh, Yoga of Asana, Posture, Yoga of Renunciation. There are so many yogas. But in those forms of yoga, what you're doing is that you are, do, you are the doer. You are trying to do something to obtain a result. In Shaktipa, you move from the state of doing things to becoming the seer. You just observe how the divine force, the divine power, begins to work within yourself. And that could lead to involuntary movement. And those movements could get you to adopt certain posture, um, to try to do things you have done in past lives, 
uh, to begin to clear things. Suddenly, a person who doesn't understand a particular language, uh, a Frenchman who begins to speak Chinese, or uh, somebody who has never danced could begin to dance. Uh, people begin to walk on stage and play the act or oh, actresses while they are simply administrative officers in his life. That is the whole idea of Shakipa and how it operates within the body. Now, if you begin to see those videos, as many people have said, they say, well, what's happening? You know, uh, are these people under some form of hypnotism? Uh, is somebody hypnotizing them? Well, it is known, every mystic will tell you, a child cannot be hypnotized. You cannot hypnotize a baby. That's not possible. But in Shaktipa, a baby can receive Shaktipa. Even an animal can receive Shaktipa. So the grace of God can descend on everything. Because that particle, that divine energy is in everything, in nature. It is in space, it is within the body, it is on trees, it is in food that we eat, it is in everything. So Shaktipa is the best way to approach the realization of the self. People say, well, then what is the point of all the things that we do? We read religious scriptures, we, uh, you know, we do uh, practice devotion, uh, we sing and we dance, kirtans. What is the point? We do arti, which is basically an offering to divine the de deities. What is the point of all of these things? Everything we do contributes to awakening a little bit the Shakti within the body. Christianity knows very well these elements. And those who are initiated within the tradition try to explain it in code. St. John spoke about it in the book of Revelation. He said there are seven churches referring to the seven chakras of the body. And described in details in the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible, what every church needs to be able to realize the Supreme Being. So I invite you to probably attend one of those sessions of Shaktipa. You can receive Shaktipa via Skype uh, if you call Dr. Bo. Uh, you can also check on my website on soham-yoga.org. But if you go to YouTube and you type oh, Dr. Bo or the World Spiritual Foundation, you will find a lot of videos on Shaktipa. And Shaktipa, as I just mentioned, is Maha Yoga. It's the highest form of yoga, which is the fastest way to reach self-realization and God-realization. Thank you.